All right, Brandon. So I got a question for you. Okay. And I don't care about this week's UFC. I got some random questions that I want to get to before we get to the UFC. What happens to Ngannou? Wow. Well, good question. Well, first of all, do you care what happens to Ngannou? Or is it like, does any, do you really care? Does anyone really care? Or like, are we just talking? I, I'm not a, that interested in Ngannou. Uh, part of the reason is I tried to make watch talk with him. And he acted like I was an idiot and a fool. I said, is that a Cartier watch? He said, yes, it is. So personally, I got my own vendetta against him. <laughs> but what I would say is I think it's a weird coincidence that Dana's building up this uh, power slap league at the same time that Francis is a free agent. Really, but, but see, the power slap, somebody said, I, I saw actually something on Twitter. A former UFC fighter had been approached about power slap, and they were paying 2000 and 2000 those are low numbers. I mean, like... Oh, you think they're low? That's what the BKFC pays. <laughs> True. <laughs> they're trying to match wage for wage. I think... Do you think... All right, so here's... The stuff that's going around... It, the Too likely... Or I wouldn't say too likely things. Two rumors going around. is Tyson Fury. He's been talking about that for a while. And that was one of the reasons why Francis didn't re-sign with them was he wanted to be able to box Tyson Fury while still have his contract. And I think that's a fair shake. I mean, they'll let Connor do it. Why not let Francis do it? Not, they would make they so don't have to let him, really. He's a free agent. No, but why they let Connor do it while he was still in UFC contract. Yeah. Why not let Ngannou do that as well? And then the UFC co-promoted that Mayweather show. So they, they made a ton of money as well. So Connor made a ton. Mayweather made a ton. Um, and of course, the UFC made a ton. Why not do the same thing with Ngannou? I wonder if they just think he'll be, he'll be embarrassed. I think he'll be embarrassed, and he's not uh, one one-hundredth of a draw that, that Connor is. I mean, yeah, does anyone true. really care about him? No. And then the other option is PFL. So PFL, I believe they signed Jake Paul to PFL, which I think that's awesome. Like I love the thought of Jake Paul signing with PFL because – Everybody in the PFL is going to float up to the top because, you know, I mean, they have Jake's Paul whole thing is like the um, uh, Muhammad Ali Act where you have to give 50 percent of earnings to the fighters, which in boxing, that's what happens. If you guys don't know, that's one of the things is promoters can't keep all of the money. 50 percent of the earnings have to be paid out to fighters during their purse. That's why boxers. Wow. They make a why, lot of money. Yeah, that's why they make so much money. So you have your guaranteed money and then you've got your percentage pay-per-views and stuff like that and so they've got to send out this money for for guarantee and then of course pay-per-view the promoters can't keep it they can they can only keep up to 50 percent uh the ufc does not do that they give up about eight <laughs> percent I, I think it was 18 percent which even that i think is probably inflated uh but so they give out a lot less and so the pfl of course with jake paul they would do more and then pfl would get huge numbers whoever's on the card with jake paul would just bring a lot of eyes there do you think either of those things actually, not that Ngannou is going to fight Jake Paul in the PFL, but that he might go to PFL because, I mean, you put Jake Paul on a card and you put Ngannou on the undercard, Ngannou is like, yeah, I'm, he'll, I'll, I'll come out of retirement for that. We'll, we'll all be millionaires <laughs> after that. Yeah, but I mean, would the PFL want to fire both those bullets? You get two big signings like that. You want to burn them all in one card. They tried to do that pay-per-view card last year that nobody watched. Yeah. And they're paying out a million dollars per. It just, it just seems like how long can the PFL last? If this isn't one big money laundering scheme, like how long can this thing last? Well, like, it's a big, man, it's a big Ponzi scheme in terms of uh, the investors. I believe, don't quote me on the owner, but one of the big, uh, so you've got WME, WMG, whatever it is, the yeah. parent company of the UFC. One of their competitors, CAA, I believe it's CAA. It's another big agency competitor. They are heavily invested into the PFL. And so who was it last year? Who was the running back from uh, Seattle? It's like, I will, I am only here so I don't get fined. Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, didn't he, wasn't he one of the big investors in the PFL? And there was a bunch of big athletes who are all like CAA clients. They're getting a bunch of their clients to invest a bunch of money into the PFL. And they're going, uh, you know, enough time hasn't passed where they're like, Hey, where's my money on that one thing I, uh, <laughs> I put the money in on? Uh, so anyway, I, you know, there's, it is a big money laundering scheme. So it's hard enough to make regular money in that, let alone 
when you're paying million dollar payouts. Yeah. These guys, these guys would have done the same tournament for a hundred thousand dollars would have been crazy pay. But now you're offering to pay a million dollars for people who aren't draws for small ratings. Like I hate the PFL product. It always seems fishy to me. I don't bet on well, it. I don't watch it. There's a big manager who's tied in with a lot of <laughs> uh, fighters who nobody, a lot of the Russian fighters and DAG fighters who nobody knows. And so you get, you know, somebody pushing that client. Is he getting some money back for pushing that client? I don't know. Um, but it kind of would make sense. And then, so what does it matter if I'm PFL, matchmaker, president, Ray Sefo? I'm going, yeah, give me all of the really, really good guys who will make it to the finals. We'll split the cut on it. And then we'll send a bunch of people in the finals. Who cares if nobody knows? We're going to be rich even if the PFL fails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I mean, that's, that's it. Whole no PFL. All right, so moving on, because I got a couple questions. I'm curious, with fights coming up and titles and stuff like that, what do you think happens with Figgy moving up to 35? And wait, first of all, did that fight not play out? Exactly, exactly. as you said. Exactly. Yep. Don't do dumb shit. Is anybody there telling him not to do dumb shit? And he does dumb shit. And, and Honestly, he's awesome. really impressive, though. Even that last sequence right before it kind of happened where uh, Moreno went in to take him down and he just kind of reversed. He fit, hit, His butt hit the ground and he's so athletic, he turned it over. I'm like, that was incredible. He is amazing. Uh, that being said, honestly, I don't know that he wins another fight. I'm with you. He's what, 35? He's 35. He's the biggest flyweight I've ever seen, but he's not a big bantamweight. Not at all. He's a small bantamweight, but massive flyweight, if that even makes sense. But it kind of makes sense. It kind of does. As weird as it is, it kind of does. With 10-pound increments, it makes sense. You can have big yeah. bantamweights that are not that, that are decent-sized featherweights, but 10 pounds at 125 means a lot yeah. more. And you get along on horrible fight IQ, but just being able to either uh, you know, guillotine everybody or knock them out with one punch. Now you go up a weight class where guys you know, absorb bigger shots. They are bigger. The wrestling is, is better. 35 years old. You can't out-athleticism a lot of those guys, no. too, just by being bigger and stronger. I just think he's got a bad style if he's not a weight bully and a, a one-shotter. So, you know, I, I like Figgy. I think he's a he's a good dude. He was uh, fun to train with. But, man, I don't know that he's winning a whole lot more fights. Um, what happens to Moreno now? There's I have one idea, but I want to hear your thought first. Um, what do you do with the flyweight title? Who are the challengers? There's only one challenger. Who is it? It's Pantoja. Yes. Yep. I'm Pantoja's glad beat him two times already. Yep. That's the only one. And he's the one who's made sense. He's the only one who I think could beat him. Even if he doesn't beat him, I'm not saying he will beat him. But I think he's the only one with enough name power. There, there's a storyline there. Well, he's literally beat him two times yes. already. So I, I think that's the only option there is Pantoja. Uh, but is that going to sell any tickets? I mean, it, It'll have to because uh, even when we first started at Fight Ready, that whole thing was, was playing out right then i think moreno had just left or maybe a year before that something yeah. like that then the ultimate fighter was happening henry picked pantoja instead of picking uh moreno and then they fought in the first round and then they fought again in the ufc so yeah. there's enough and i think henry was already kind of uh foreshadowing that like you think there was a some beef with the, the figgy thing well just wait till pantoja yeah. i i've coached him before so I, I think there's enough to sell a fight but who really can sell a 125 yeah fight? that's it, who wanted that's to see it. a fourth fight there yeah well i'm just glad glad we don't have to see a fifth fight um all right there was a couple other things i wanted to oh if connor comes back who does he fight uh michael chandler would be the best one right has okay. to be i would assume so but i don't I, i'm kind of annoyed because i feel like michael Ch look i like chandler i don't think he's deserving of that big money fight big payday fight big everything fight losing the last couple of fights that he's lost i feel like you need to give that to somebody who is deserving of a huge paycheck. Yeah, but he's an exciting style. He's an exciting fight. Yeah. And he's one that Connor could get back in the win column. I mean, yeah, that's true. They're, they're trying to talk about matching up Tony and him on the Ultimate Fighter. What what an awful matchup. Like, yeah. it, it would just be so clear what's happening there. And do we want to waste another Connor yeah. fight on Tony Ferguson where he's just going to nuke him? Or yep. do we want to see something that might be an exciting fight, something you can sell? Yeah. And, and actually, to that extent, we've got a couple of guys who are probably on the Ultimate Fighter who are going that way but they keep delaying it and, and I think I don't know this at all I, I think it's the coaches I think there was some talk of and we and I, I don't know this for being I, I'm literally saying this from the reports in the news because I actually don't have any inside information and it's not that now anyway 
is that we it's funny because uh, I was talking with somebody and they're like why don't why doesn't Henry coach it with Aljo lead up build up the fight and then they fight each other and we're like that is the best idea ever <laughs> and then we heard we were hearing rumors that it was going to be that and then they're like nope it's not and then then we we're hearing rumors that it was Connor and then Connor got into the car accident and got stuff in it so now that's not it so I wonder if it was supposed to be Connor mm. but then he got in the car accident so now they're shuffling and moving it back maybe it still is Connor maybe not I don't know um, but they're having I think the the fallout not the fallout the delay is the coaching status of of what they're doing because i think the fighters are ready to go i think they're just waiting on coaches and then latest i've heard it might be gilbert burns and mass vidal but i think that fight is going to happen too soon now i think that's april 8th and so i don't think that i think that would be too soon to air the fight or you know air the ufc air the season and then actually get oh, it oh that's way too soon. they need yeah. at least what six months yeah or something, something like that. that so i i don't know i'm curious to see what what they do with that but talking about connor i, I, I was kind of hoping that he was a coach because that would be entertaining. Oh, That'd he's great. He's great TV always. Yeah. So, all right. That's a lot. Um, I guess we can get... I just had questions. I want to talk about these things, these topics in this sport. Random stuff, huh? Random stuff. Good thing we got bookmarks on this Good chapter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so when you guys complain, go out there and uh, send us the bookmarks and we'll add them. But uh, before you do, like, please like, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the Patreon. Get the pics. So I think last week we did really well. I was really happy with my Worley Alves pick that the whole world said Worley was going to win. You know, I picked Dalby, but I screwed up on both Bonfien brothers. Like I just, I, I thought Israel was good, but I didn't think he was going to be as athletic and as good as he was by any means. And then Gabriel. Wow. I mean, just that was kind of crazy. Like both of them, their tape didn't show them being that good. It showed them being fine, but they, they really, that was super impressive. I, I, this is the thing though. I, I hate when, when somebody loses and then they, they get sold down the river to me. I didn't think Terrence McKinney was ever that good. He's extremely athletic and, and he can start you, but that's a different subset. I never thought he was, really that good like amazing amazing yeah. Muner Lazez I actually think is really good. really good he got caught he got submitted I don't think it's time to sell him down the river I think he's still got fights to win in the UFC I still think he's really solid skill for skill but the bomb teams looked amazing they look good they look good um all right who's uh who, who do you got who's uh number one on the charts all right so this one we're gonna do the uh, UFC fight night Lewis versus Spivak now I do have to say there's been a lot of chatter uh, everyone was hoping that you would do the names for this week. Oh, I can do that. It's so funny because I actually thought about that. I was like, man, I can't do these names. If I can't do a Russian name, I can't do a, a Korean, Korean name. Korean <laughs> name. Like I'm already like borderline getting canceled, and I'm gonna ching chong chang it. Yeah, like, oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I uh, now I'll, I'll read off names if you want. Well, I can take the first. One. Okay, take, this take is the my first people. One. Uh, so we'll start from the very bottom. So we have Tatsuro Tyra versus Jesus Aguilar. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I didn't do a lot of tape on this one, only because you know I know these guys both pretty well. I taped Jesus a lot. I, I got melted on that contender series fight with Arison Ferreira. I thought Ferreira, even though he's a little bit of an ape, was better everywhere than Aguilar. Uh, Tyra is just everything that Ferreira wanted to be, just a little bit sharper, a little bit smarter everywhere. Um, I mean, there's no way you can play a minus 1,200 price tag uh, no. on this one straight up, but I think Tyra's sub is just going to be a gold mine for years to come. Yeah. So, Or Tyra inside the distance somehow, because yeah. Tyra's striking is not it's very good. bad. It's clean. Yeah. It's, he's not a good brawler. Like He's, he's technical, and, and is very technical when people aren't pushing him. When they brawl, he, he'll shoot. He's not comfortable there, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, I mean, Aguilar is all meat hooks, but the biggest thing is he is an ape of apes. He just grabbed, he's big and strong. His strikes are literally- I wouldn't say big. Well, he's thick and he's wide and strong looking, even if he's short. Left hook, right hook swings, but he does dumb stuff. He Body lock, lateral drop, ends up him out. Body Always. lock, throw, ends up him out. Body lock just jumps and hopes they end up on the ground and he's on the bottom right there. Such bad fight IQ. His wrestling is not great. Even if he gets a hold of Tyra, he's just going to do something stupid to where Tyra is on top winning. Like Tyra inside the distance, Tyra by submission, 
Tyra by Karate Chop, Tyra by anything before the bell rings. Yeah, I totally and, agree. And I think it's. I, think I, it's I was really pissed on the Contender series. I had Arison Ferreira by submission. Part of me, and I don't think Ferreira has like almost any submissions on his record. And that very first round, he had him in the tightest yeah. guillotine you've ever seen in your life. And and Aguilar didn't tap. I was I was so upset about that one. The only thing that actually worries me about this fight is not not Tyra losing or anything. Is that Aguilar is just good enough to defend the choke, and so people put a doesn't go the distance or something weird Gets and Tyra just that. yeah mauls him like he did was it Candelario who he beat for 15 yeah. minutes but he couldn't finish and so I, on this one I think that's like the oh of course Tyra inside the distance and then it ends up being like 15 minutes of mauling, but he doesn't finish him. So I don't know if this is a touchable fight, but uh, on I think the Aguilar odds. gets tired. So I, I think I think Tyra is going to finish this one. OK, I, I could see that Tyra is definitely winning this one. All righty. Next up, uh, I'll take this one, too. We have uh, Jun Young Park versus Dennis Tululin. OK, go for it. Yeah, this one I actually like a lot. Uh, I remember last time you were you were super heavy on Tululin when he was fighting. Um, pick it. Pick it. Yeah. And I was like, no, I don't think so. I think he's a fraud. I think this. His pre-UFC tape was not good. It, it really just was not good. He made so many mistakes, resting on his back, just sloppy striking, getting rocked all the time. His pre-UFC tape was not good. I don't know what he did. He leveled up. He leveled up big time. Um, even the fight against Kizriev. So hold on. I'm, I'm going to interrupt for a second. Um, I don't know that he did level up, and let's not get crazy, and I want to hear the rest of it, but he fought Jamie Pickett, and Jamie Pickett is really, really bad. So keep going. But Yes, he is, but Kizriev's not bad at all. Kizriev's pretty good. Kizriev can wrestle, and uh, he defended a lot of his shots. He was counterpunching him really, really well. Like, I think he leveled up a lot. From the pre-UFC tape, which was god-awful, like, this guy's the worst in the world, and Kizriev ended up being, what, one of the biggest favorites, like, ever? Like, something like that? Yeah. Minus 1,200-something. Um, and he defended some shots from him. He was counterpunching him with the right hand. He was stalking him with pressure. He actually looked good at a lot of points in that fight where you're like, man, if you had Kizriev, you're a little bit nervous. He just took the fight on short notice and had no cardio, got tired, and he made one mistake. He actually defended the takedown really well, but Kizriev went around his back and then just got on it and, and got the choke. Uh, the fight against Jamie Pickett, I love his forward pressure. Uh, he's willing to take some on the chin and, and just, just stalk you down. I, I love his forward pressure. I love his counter-striking. His takedown defense is actually super, super clean. He always has those hips ready. He defends really well. Um, and even in the Kizria fight, he went offensively for a takedown, yep. which was pretty And got it. And got I mean, it. He popped right back up. But, hey. but he got it. Yep. He's been training with uh, Renat Fedorakanov. Right? I, I think I like this spot a lot here. I think that, um, what is it, Iron Turtle? Yeah. That's his nickname. I think he's pretty undersized. I think he's small. I think he keeps his hand super, super wide and depends on this kind of flicking jab so that he can he can wrestle. When you have a guy that's going to stalk you down, that's going to counterpunch you and just sprawl and brawl, man, I, it's hard for me not to take dog money here on, on Tululin. I, I think I really like him in this spot just stylistically. I, like, I, I sorry, I'm just switching our camera here. I, I don't think you're crazy about the analysis on Tululin. I actually, I think he leveled up. I think he looks better. He has really good boxing. He has really good, good clean one-twos, yep. double jab cross. I mean, like, just, just clean, solid boxing. Good head movement, good power. Wrestling wears him out fast. Even in the Jamie Pickett fight, he is breathing heavy. And then he caught those really good elbows off of but stuff. But he beat his ass and kept going with a oh, high pace. Yeah, yeah. But it, he was definitely tired off of that. And then we saw him in the fight before that where he got tired. Um, I, I'm on turtle here. And I, I didn't know if I was going to be. I was, I was looking at stuff and I saw some chatter in the Discord. Like, oh, we're, we're high in Tallulah here. We're high in Tallulah. And I was like, whoa, wait, are we? So I was... I was really looking at that fight, watching tape, expecting to be high on Tallulah. And it's not that I'm not. I think Iron Turtle is just under um, valued. I, th I think people just underestimate him. His hands are really fast. He's got a good jab. I, I don't like how he kind of reaches for punches, but he doesn't take damage while he's doing it. He really, the, the one time we saw him take damage was against Gregory Rodriguez, and they were just swinging. He just decided to go balls out and went kind of nuts over there. So, but what he does really well, and we saw in, um, I forget if it was Joseph Holmes' fight or, or what it was, he got the clinch, did a little leg reap, slid out to the back, did not try and lift or anything. He did what we do, jumped up, put his feet in the back of his legs, and yeah, sat him down. Joseph Holmes. That was beautiful. His, and then we saw him even against Nchukwu, 
where he'd end up on the bottom and he's going deep half, coming up, scrambling back up, getting on top, and he beat the shit out of him. I, I think Turtle is really hard to finish. I think he is hard to off. I, I think he's hard to hold down. I think he has a really good fight IQ. Some stuff I saw that he did against Eric Anders when we fought him. The, the way that he actually controlled the cage is when he was being pushed up against the fence, Eric Anders kept trying to get a body lock, but he couldn't because Turtle wouldn't dig an underhook. He would actually just hold his hand next to his body and just frame up on the bicep and hand. So Anders was never allowed in, and then he would just slide out, collar tie slide out on the exit right there. He's got really good submissions. He's got a good Darce. He's got good... I, I really like Turtle here. Can he get knocked out? Absolutely. But... We saw him get knocked out against Gregory Rodriguez because he was exchanging heat. He hurt Rodriguez, who we now know's chin is not great. Which eh. yeah, so it's not saying much exactly. So he hurt Rodriguez, went in for the kill a little bit too much, got dropped, got knocked out because of it. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to avoid. I think he's going to pepper and move and pepper and move, and then I think he's going to wrestle. I think that's going to wear Tallulah down, and I think. I think he's going to put a beating on Tallulah in the end of the second round and, and into that third round as well. Maybe even get the sub. Yeah, I, I think if you're going to play uh, Iron Turtle here, I think the best, well, the prop that I'd be looking at is probably a round three. I think, uh, I don't know if he has enough power to put Tallulah away on the feet. And I think Tallulah's cardio will hold up for at least one, two rounds to counter wrestle and yep. go. I agree with that 100%. I think a round three Iron Turtle could be good. Or Tallulah knockout. That's kind of the two that I'm yeah. looking at. But I don't know. I mean, like... Who is knocking out Turtle? I mean, he's he's fought good guys. He hasn't fought Tallulah yet. No, but he fought he, even a really good long Joseph Holmes, who he was able to easily come in and close the distance. I, I think people sleep on Turtle. I think they sleep on Joseph Turtle. Holmes with no takedown defense. That's the difference. Yeah, that's true. One hundred percent. That's true. the difference. True. You saw Jamie Pickett get wide eyed. Not that Jamie Pickett's a world beater, but he Jamie, is athletic. He's athletic, but his takedowns are horrible. They're horrible. He's only good at pushing people against the fence. You even saw Kizriev though. Kizriev's takedowns are good, and you saw the second that he he you know Tolulin uh, got taken down on the first one, and actually that was a funny one because his takedown defense looks so good, but Kizriev just got that that ankle and ripped it out and from pulled it in. Them. Yes. But Tallulah stood up, and then you saw kind of peppering him on the feet. Tallulah was walking him down. He shot for a takedown. Tallulah uh, uh, stopped it right away, down blocked it. And you saw Gizriev's eyes get really big. Oh, shit. I think he's going to block the takedown, but Turtle's going around to the back. That's what he's going to have to That's do. That's what he's going to do. He, he's very good at defending tip, you know, yes. standard blast doubles. I'm and- getting higher on, on Turtle, and I, think, I don't think he's ever going to be a, a world beater, but I think he's going to float between that he's going to be a gatekeeper. If you want to break the top 15, top 10, you got to go through turtle. And if you can, you're going to get through turtle. And if you can't, that's, I, I think he's going to be that, that line. All right. So next up we have G Yan Kim versus Mandy Baum. Okay. So hold on. I was just going to ask which one is this, but then you said Mandy Baum because you could say G Young Kim <laughs> and I could say, that's one of six people on the card. So you guys, all right, first of all. All right, all right. No, we're getting into this. If, like, if I'm wrong on a call here, I'm not wrong because I just thought it was a different Korean. Okay, that's like, fair. Like, these, I was going through these, and I'm like, wait, which one, which one is Ji Young Kim? Is that the one fighting Guk Su Koi? Or is that the one fighting Derek, you know? Lewis. Over, okay, like, Whitey, calm down. I could down, not figure down. it out as I'm going through, and then I don't know them like well anyway, and so I'm just mixing up names at this point. So, all right, so so Mandy Baum, the Lady Korean, as I'm going to refer to her. <laughs> so Lady Korea, uh, I mean, she's long and fast and has... You said fast? Yes. No, like, she's not fast. She has quick hands. She's slow as hell. She has quick hands compared slow to... Slow molasses. Man, compared to some of the women she's fighting, she has... Compared to Bohm, who's like the loopiest, slowest hands on the planet, Ooh. her volume is decent. She's got a good jab. She has a nice long jab. Her striking... Her striking is not bad. It's just her chin straight up in the air. N- no, her chin is not bad up in the air on her jabs and crosses. It's as she throws more punches and as she throws her hook. As she throws her one and two, it's not bad. Watch. It's as she throws her hook, she gets tall, that, and then that chin pops up. And, and then in these longer combinations, because she'll throw a lot, she starts to get higher and higher and higher in those combinations. But if you watch her just on a jab and a cross, it's not bad. Um, 
jujitsu is not really well. I say jujitsu is not a play here, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if Bohm tries to jujitsu a little bit. Yeah. Um, and Bohm is at extreme in Lady Korea is at uh, Syndicate. Syndicate, correct? For some reason, I had thought that Bohm was at Syndicate with her. For some reason, I was like, are they They teammates? trade so often. They go, all, so many of the people go back and forth. So somebody's like got to have some insight. Somebody's got to have some yeah, chatter. Yeah, give us the inside intel, you guys. Some chatter. So um, I, I think, and then Bohm on the other side is a low kicker. She's got this really low boxing style stance, but she doesn't really box well. She doesn't punch a lot. She really loops everything. Um, I, I like Lady Korea in this spot. I, I really do. The only way I don't, and, and just volume, I think Bohm's volume, we always talk about it, cardio and volume. And Lady Korea has the cardio. We've seen her fight through a lot of fights. And I thought she beat a uh, zombie girl. I mean, I, I a just. A lot of people did. I really do. And, and even if she didn't, the, the way that that fight went down, if that fight plays out with Mandy Bohm across from it, she's going to win because of volume and cardio. So, I, I wouldn't say her cardio is the greatest ever, though, because she faded pretty hard in the uh, Meatball Molly fight. Yes, yes, she did. But it's it's good, it's good, especially when she's not grappling a lot, when it's more striking. And this is more of a striking affair. I wouldn't be surprised if Bohm tries to wrestle a little bit. I'm curious. It's going to make her tired, too. Yes, because we saw that in the... Um, the Leonardo fight? Yes, and, and that, that kind of wore her out. But I, I like Lady Korea a lot here. Just Bohm, I, I don't think she's bad, but I think she's a German kickboxer. How good is German women's kickboxing like divisions? Uh, I, I, I feel like everybody's an amateur Muay Thai champion or a, a something Muay Thai. Yeah, her and Bea Malecki can fight for the title. I was going to bring up Bea Malecki. <laughs> That's exactly it. And she kind of reminds me of that where... She's just kind of slow and labored, and I like her low kicks. There's that. And she's actually good in the clinch. She will fire some good knees and some stuff up the middle in the clinch, but she doesn't really initiate the clinch a lot, but when she's there, it'll happen. I, I didn't tape this one this time because I've just been down. These two have taken me through hell. I think I bet on uh, on Kim almost every fight, only to be disappointed, <laughs> almost every fight. Uh, I had her, you know, against Meatball Molly, and I was like, man, she's going to win this fight, and then just lost it right at the end. Uh, against Priscilla, I was like, man, she's going to kill her, lost it at the end. Just like, man, how much more heartbreak can I take? And I, I feel like there's chatter about Mandy Baum. There's been a lot of hype on Mandy Baum and a lot of chatter about Mandy Baum, and we've yet to see it ever. Like she, Anything. Like, there's nothing, nothing impressive not in her one UFC. Redeeming quality. Yes. Like, the same thing could be said about, like, Cheyenne Vlismus. But you watch Cheyenne Vlismus, like her striking is legitimately very good. Fast hands, good head movement. Like she is the goods as far as striking. Now she needs to round out her game, be a little more complete. But the same chatter I'm hearing on Mandy Bohm and where, what does she do good? What is she, where is she amazing? And and I don't understand it. Um, I'm just personally, I'm going to have to just skip this fight because uh, I'm worried about recency bias against Mandy Bohm. Victoria Leonardo is not good, but she doesn't fuck off. Yeah. And she presses forward. She throws high volume, even if it's in the air and it's completely random. There was a clear path for an upset there. Just throwing enough stuff out there to win that fight. Jian Kim, uh, a lot of times, plays from the outside. She's always kind of on the back foot. She's counterpunching. She's got crisp hands when she wants to throw them. But I do think she's slow, and I do think she takes a lot of damage. Um, but she, she wears it well. She's got a good chin. It's just a big chin. She, yeah. A big head. She's got a huge head. And, and women don't hit hard enough to really... Especially Balm. Like, yeah, Balm's got not, nothing. Yeah. Like, over is clearly an easy one here. Over two and a half. Yeah, I would agree. I, I don't think this is ending before that. And, right, man, yeah, I really like um, Lady Korea here. If we're just, just looking at this, I want to say Jiyeon Kim smokes her. Just from what we've seen... I'm worried about, you know, I'm worried that the... Uh, like, if we weren't talking betting in front of people, you and I are just there just talking fights. You're like, yeah, Jiyeon Kim, Kim wins that. Yeah, I think I think so too. Like, we're trying to find the value here. I just keep worrying about this, like, this, like, beast that we've never seen before that Mandy Baum is like, all right, finally, I'm busting out of my shell and I'm ready to show everybody what I do in the gym. I haven't seen it. I don't know that it actually exists. Um, you know, my eyes are telling me Jiyeon Kim is going to win this fight. But... Uh, yeah, I, I think that's all I can go from. Just from the tape that I've seen. Like, okay. I, can't, I can't go on, on the rumors. Well, uh, all right. Let's 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 move on. That was like, how long did we do that one for? A few, three, four minutes? Way longer than we should have. Three, should've. four minutes more than we should have. Yep. A lot. Let's right. hear it. What do we got? Next up, we have Hyun 
uh, Hyun Sung Park versus Suk Sung Guk Choi. Yeah, see, see, this is where we're at here. This is where, am I up or are you up? Here, I, I'm going to go because I know Guk Choi. Yeah, he came to fight ready. Yeah, we call him Kaibi. So this is a weird one. God, it looks so red still. I even adjusted the camera. You got the pink shirt on. Is that scotch and soda, by the way? Of course it is. Yeah, we're both wearing that, and we both decided today was pink day. Yeah. And I got some pink on my shoes. I got pink on my face because I look... ah. Anyway, so Choi is... First of all, we call him Kaibi. I don't know where all of these Korean English names come from, but like we have Red, who is like, you know, just a big giant Korean. Then we have Big, who is a bigger giant Korean. <laughs> we had White, who I don't know why he was white. And then we have Kaibi. Um, and I don't know what Kaibi is or why he's Kaibi, but he's Kaibi. <laughs> and so Kaibi got the call. Actually, he was 165 pounds when he got the call for Contender Series. Or 165? Not, con- not Contender Series, Road to uh, UFC. Yes, 165 pounds. He had been living in America, drinking beer and eating american food for like three months with zombie holy shit ago. 165 he's shorter than i am yeah oh it was amazing so he and he didn't show up that fat he just got that left fat. that fat so uh but he was in he was kind of just helping you know with with zombies camp with volk and he took zombie down a few times he's actually decent his wrestling is actually really good um his jujitsu isn't amazing but it's like it's almost like a wrestler who learns jujitsu and but that he hasn't gotten proficient at it yet so for lack of a better kind of analogy and then his striking isn't bad it's fine but you know there's that in fights he uses when he offensively wrestles he uses it really well we saw him get on some backs of people on road to the ufc and fall off and kind of slide off so he doesn't have the control and his hands aren't bad. He just seems very tentative with them. And he doesn't throw with conviction. He's kind of like peppering. He kind of like, it's kind of countering. It doesn't really like, you don't, it's not a guy who looks like he knows exactly what he's going to do and he's going to go impose his will. And then Park on the other side is freaking solid. He is definitely a grappler by, tra- but I don't even want to say grappler. He's a submission specialist. He, he just, his overall jujitsu is fine, but he hunts submissions with a vengeance. His striking is clean. It's weird though. He'll hurt people with his striking. His striking is good, but I, I don't feel like he's really comfortable striking. Like I don't know that he really wants to be there. I think the weakest area of his game is his offensive wrestling. I don't think it's great, um, but he it, he does he creates these scrambles and he gets the positions that you that you want to see what you want to get to. I think I think Park is clearly the upside here. I think he's got more ways to win. If Kaibi wins this, it is really what I think is if Kaibi wins, it's either offensively getting takedowns and just winning rounds or Park shoots on him, he stuffs it and ends up on top type of stuff. I Looking at the tape, it's Park all the way. Knowing what I know about Kaibi and just being a little bit biased, I'm like, gosh, he really is legitimately better than... He's tougher than shit, and his wrestling is a lot better than what it shows on on film. So I, I think Park is a smart play here, but I, I've got a soft spot in my heart with Kaibi as a human, but then also with his wrestling that I know is better than, than he's shown. And being with Zombie in Zombie's camp this time, Zombie's jiu-jitsu is phenomenal. Zombie is a Santino DeFranco black belt, all right? <laughs> um, Superboy is over there doing stuff now. Uh, running camp with Zombie as well. And his jujitsu is amazing. Zombie says, Zombie's like, his jujitsu might be better than mine. He's not mine, like, but Zombie's. No, nobody's better than mine. But, <laughs> so he's really big on him too. So if you get those guys coming up in camp, I expect a lot of jujitsu scrambles. So I expect it to be really good for Kaibi getting ready for this. Um, I, I lean Park on this, but I think Kaibi is going to do better than what people kind of expect with the tape. Um. Yeah, I, I'm actually I'm with you. I'm with you all the way on this one. Uh, at first, watching Park, his striking is so beautiful and so clean. I I actually think he looks comfortable. I, to me, he looks game. He looks excited. The only time he didn't really look that comfortable was against that Thai that Thai kid who was beating the shit out of him on the feet. But that guy was very very good striker. And then he kind of did what he had to do to get close enough, get on top, submit him right. And that that kid tapped quick. Uh, that's a tie fighter. That's a kid who's been doing it his whole entire life. 
in the fight previous to that, man, his striking looked great. He's putting together combos, three punch combos, following with a leg kick. He's in, he's out. He looks tall. He looks what five seven, five eight, yeah. and athletic. Like he's Very. he he he's calm. built like a fighter. Yeah, yeah, he's calm. Yep. It is is uh is Kaibi? Is that how I yep, say? Yep, Kaibi. Is he about five five? Yes. Okay, I think he's about five five, and I think Park's probably five seven, five eight. Yeah. And their their body styles look a lot different because Kaibi's shorter, stockier, yep. thicker legs. legs. He's got big legs. Yep. Thinner upper body. And Park is just that long, rangy yep. kind of like a Dustin Jacoby of flyweight kind of that that yep. frame. I like Park here. I, I think I agree with you. The tape says it's Park. Um, watching the film, you're right. He can wrestle. Kaibi can wrestle. Like he's mm -hmm. he's getting single legs. He's chain wrestling really really well. But he's not holding many people down. That's the biggest problem that I have is he does so good getting in, but not maintaining the position. And that's the next evolution, I think, of MMA. It's not the takedowns. It, almost everyone can get a takedown, but rarely can people hold people these days. And especially at flyweight where there's so many scrambles and guys are so fast, and especially a guy as tall as that, I, I think just Park is, I think he's game. I think he's yeah. the A-side. I actually was more interested in this fight on the feet because Park is pretty game, but Kaibi knows what he's doing too. Yeah, Kaibi's more. I, I think Kaibi's comfortable enough to like to see it through. Yeah, and then if it, if it plays out on the feet quite a bit, does Kaibi get the takedown when Park's not expecting? Just it? to mix it in. Yes. Yeah, I think that would be super super wise. Um, I actually can't wait to see this one play out on the feet because the way that I'm seeing Kaibi, he's not like you said, he's not that kind that goes out and has a game plan of how he's going to put stuff together. He's kind of like, all right, I feel this touch on my hands. I'm going to counter back. Yep. I'm going to swing. So I can't wait to see it play out there on the feet. Um, I think I'm going to make a play on park. Also something that's interesting to me is the under. Um, I know these are flyweights and I know there's some grappling aspects here, but I think park striking is so good that he's either going to put a stamp on it and go for the finish or he's going to get clipped trying that. Uh, the the best play I like in terms of like money and betting and everything is park round one, um, like Smart. yeah park round one or park submission round one, uh, and I think if you're gonna play a, a prop like that, it's got to be submission round one where the adrenaline is high and emotions are high and and you get somebody park hurts him, Kaibi shoots and then gets you know thrown in submission really quickly. Yeah, um, I, I, I like an under just just for uh, the striking. Just like two guys that are going to stand there and just beat the hell out of each other. I know it's flyweight, but it's plus 190 right now. I don't know. That's I, not bad. I, I like that spot. I like it. All right. What do we have next? Let's see, I'm all looking at the odds. All right, so next up we have uh, Rinya Namakamura versus Toshiomi Kazama. Lead it off. Yeah, I love I love, I love love this spot. So I actually bet on uh, Kazama pretty heavily when he was on the uh, road to the UFC. He was fighting kind of an older guy, uh, not a great grappler. And I said, this kid's pretty solid. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that's got a lot of first round submissions, but I actually think his grappling is more solid than, than people think that it is. And he went out, he put on a dominant performance. He looked great, judo throws, everything. This other guy, uh, Rinya. Rinya, holy shit. He's talented. He's a U23 world champion. Yeah, holy shit, he's talented. The, see, the problem with Kazama is he doesn't have the wrestling to, to be able to use the jiu-jitsu. And even watching uh, Rinya, when he grapples, it's not like he's just one of these sturdy wrestlers. Like, like he is very good, but he can actually grapple too. He's got awareness with jiu-jitsu. He's trapping arms so he can punch. He transitions and moves well. I don't think he's one-dimensional wrestler, wrestler, wrestler like, like a lot of these guys are. Um, his striking... Holy shit. I think the only problem with him is sometimes he's an ape trying to finish and trying to show how good that he is. I worry about him getting tired and then mm. getting lazy and getting, you know, his back taken and choked out. But honestly, I think he's clear a side here. I mean, obviously the, the, uh, odds say so too. Right. Um, I, I love him in this spot. Actually, a play that I made earlier today was the under two and a half. I cannot fathom that this line is set at two and a half. With Rinya, who's coming out smoking these guys in one round, and then Kazama, who's submitting everybody in one round, yep. I think Kazama's going to get tired or he's going to get lit up on the feet, and he's going to have no answer. I think that's an easy KO under two and a half rounds. Or Rinya gets dog shit tired from trying to kill him. Kazama doesn't die, jumps on his back, and chokes him out. So my biggest play is the under two and a half here, but... I think Rinya is a great play. I don't think anything more has to be said on that. I think it's spot on. I think Rinya is the play. I think under fight does not go the distance is the play. Um, he, the only other thing is Rinya is 
is one of those. He is an athlete, and he's got the wrestling pedigree and the striking pedigree, and is down to throw. Honestly, like I think this kid is like the next wave. He's of the next guy. wave. Like, he's, he's a solid one. Good. Yep. It's hard to watch a guy like that and not go, man. This guy's top five. Like yep. he, he really is. Even when he's getting clipped, he's throwing so much heat at these. He guys. He doesn't care. It's almost like Ilya Toporia. Fuck it. Like it's yeah. Ilya Toporia. He's just down. He's like, let's throw. Let's see who goes. I'm gonna come out on yep. top. I'm gonna come out. All right. Next up. Yeah, I, I like that play, guys. I think that's probably one of the best spots on the card and the under two and a half. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if during the during the week they switch it to one and a half. I don't know why that line is set at two and a half for two guys that are all finishing first round. Uh, all right, next up we have Za Yi versus Jung Young Lee. This is what, what was the analogy? I was trying to think. This to me is I was looking at tape on Superboy Choi, who we'll talk about later, and I ran across Superboy Choi. And uh, who's the Frenchy uh, Canadian? Um, Charles Jordan. Jordan. That's this fight to me, where you've got a guy who is really technical in Yi, uh, kind of everywhere. He is really he to me. I don't know if you can see this comparison. He he looks like uh, Charles Oliveira to me. Like he kind of plods forward okay. and has this like Muay Thai, and then he's very Jiu Jitsu oriented. He just kind of looked like him for a But he has great wrestling. Like, his yeah. takedowns are great. He scrambles well. High guard. Does all of the right stuff. And then the other Choi on the other side is just batshit crazy. Just swinging yeah. and wild and going nuts. Um, he just throws. And, and he gets hit quite a bit. All caution to the wind. Uh, chin, I mean, he's very hittable. It's not like his chin is horribly high, but it's not tucked. His punches aren't super technical. He's just throwing. Um, he likes to fight. He's down to fight. I think this is the upset spot of the card. I think Yi is a plus 200. And this is one of those that I... Like, can Yi lose? Absolutely. He can absolutely get clipped and knocked out and beat. You know what I mean? Choi is... Man, that dude's a... a, a spark plug. He's, he's explosive. a spark plug. Yeah. I really he's grappling against uh, one of the guys on the 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 guy who road, beat Balajin Matsumoto. Well, the guy who beat Balajin, who's phenomenal, and then Matsumoto as well, or Matsu, yeah. whatever. Um, he was grappling with him, who went to a decision with Tonin. I mean, he is doing all of the right wrestling things. If he gets put on his back, he's scrambling back up. His offensive wrestling is good. I think with Choi, I think as long as he doesn't battle him out in the first round and wrestles him round one. Now, the only thing is, and this is hard with a lot of this card, is I couldn't find all the tape that I want. And he got knocked out three fights ago by another guy who was on the road to the UFC. I think they said it was a knee round two. And I couldn't find the tape on it, so I was curious to see how that fight went. Um, oh, that berserker guy, yeah. Um, who lost, and I, and I watched him and was not impressed with him in, in his other fight. But I, I couldn't find that tape, so... So take this with a grain of salt, you guys. If you've seen that tape, like let me know, send it my way, DM me or something because I'm curious. All things considered, I like Yi's cardio. I like his striking. I like his wrestling. His jujitsu is good. And then on the other side of that, you just have a crazy bomber guy who's just going nuts the whole time. Who he can absolutely win. I'm not saying this is a lock, you guys, because somebody, anybody that fights like that. You know, can you, you can always lose. And he looks honestly, he looks and good to me. Choi, yeah, yeah, Choi looks good. He does a lot of stuff well. It's just that crazy recklessness. People who fight like that, they've got to win with that big knockout, or they they just too many openings occur. You get too tired. That's just a you cannot sustain that for fifteen minutes and expect to not get hit, not get submitted, or not get tired. If if you don't, you know, really hurt people. I mostly want to agree with you, but I'm also going to disagree with you on like one thing. So, you know, his last two fights have been super fast and he's knocking these guys the fuck out. It's crazy what he's doing to these guys. So I needed to see a decision. Can he put it together for 15 minutes? Right. So I watched that last fight that he had against the champion where he won. He won a decision. But a lot of that fight, first of all, no grappling in the entire fight. It was all stand up. Very first round. He gets rocked. Did you watch that fight? I, I couldn't even tell you. I saw so many 
Asian <laughs> fighters and promotions that I don't know and shows that I don't know. And I have notes on everything, but they're on my computer, which is recording right now. So I, and I meant to actually print out a okay. copy of my notes so I could look at he which ones. He fought Mu Giam Choi in yes. Road FC 50. Yes. So that first round was the most crazy shit I've ever seen in my life. He yeah. comes out, gets rocked, then he stands back up within the same exchange, rocks him, then gets rocked again, rocks him, and he falls. And so it was just crazy yep. back and forth until... Uh, and, and he's losing most of the he was rounds. losing, yeah. I would say he was losing until, until he, he wins got, at the end. Yes, yeah. And, you know, I, I was sitting on the Discord today, and someone's like, have you taped this fight yet? And I said, oh, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And they go, if uh, if Yi Za, Za Yi doesn't get the takedown, he's getting knocked out. And then I'm like, okay. So I'm expecting his striking to be horrible. We, we cashed on him already as an underdog two times. He had no tape on him, right? So nobody knew who he was except for uh, my boy Hey Lee said, no, okay. no, he's, he's good. He's good. He trained with Yiza? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he, he knew who he was. So that's my, uh, my insider. He gives me all the, nice. all the tips. But um, we, we cashed on him twice. And then I'm you know, going back to the film because I didn't watch the second fight because it was too tired. And he won the first fight so quickly. I'm expecting him to look horrible on the feet. He is so competent everywhere. His wrestling is good. He doesn't get tired. He is a fucking bulldog. His striking is high. He swings with heat. Like, he really is good. I'm wondering why he's a plus. I think it's Korea versus, I think as a whole. If you look at those road uh, to the UFC fights. The Koreans killed it. Well, the, not only did they kill it, but see, they didn't all. But if you look at all of the odds, they were all, all of the Koreans were favored to kill it. And then even uh, we'll, we'll get to another one of Zombies guys fought uh, as well and got knocked out by somebody who's in the finals later. But um, I think the betting public thinks higher of Korea than they do of China and Singapore and these other places. And they should. But um, that kid's good. I, yes. But the kid is good. And they're at the Shanghai P.I. The Shanghai P.I. has been pretty much shut down. So they're over at Bali MMA. So they've yeah. been at Bali for a while now. With better coaches, with better training partners. He's with that tall kid, uh, uh, Ma Shate, right? Ma Shate, yes. And then a guy who's on the the UFC show with me is one of the head uh, people over at the Shanghai uh, PI. His name is Dean Amasinger, so he's a British guy. So anyway, they're they're getting better and they're doing better. Um, but yeah, I, I like Yi here. I think it's crazy that he's that big of a guy. I, I do too. I'm going to play Yi again one more time, underdog money. If he doesn't get starched in that first round, man, I just see him forcing the grappling is going to make a guy that's fast twitch like that so fucking tired. Yeah. I'm glad you come to that conclusion as well because I thought you were going to say I was crazy or something or no. you know, just because that's not the, it does, my thoughts on this does not reflect those odds at all. There, there's a few of these guys on this card that like Korean MMA is really good right now yep. holy shit it's good the striking is so educated it's you know a lot of those pushes and pulls and just like that really clean striking and i can see why you can fall in love with Choi. he he looks mm -hmm. just clean like that like he's just so dynamic and explosive but at the end of the day i'm gonna take that grizzly grinding crazy guy like that he, he just does everything well yep. he's not completely outmatched on the feet give him grappling upside and he doesn't get tired and he knows the fight that he wants yeah i, I like z uh Zai, yeah. Zai, Za Zai. 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 <laughs> Is there an over under for this fight? I don't know. It's got to be at 1.5. There's no way it's at two. Um, let's see. Zai. No, it's actually at two and a half, but the under is minus 210. So, I mean, I like that spot still. Yeah, still. Okay. All right. What's up next? All righty. Up next, we have. Oh, geez. Sorry. Uh, up next, we have Ansh. Anshul uh, Jubli versus Jekka Saragay. Saragay. Saragay? Saragay? This is, I think, the other... Man, <laughs> these names, you guys, without... So... Um, this is India versus... Uh, Singapore or... Um, um, it's got to be Singapore, right? It's somewhere. Indonesia. Indonesia, Indonesia. yeah. Um, Jubli is... This is actually the... the fight that I was thinking reminds me even more of that Jordan Choi fight than the other one that I said. Okay. Is you've got Jubilee who is a little bit bigger, who looks the part. He's got good he looks decent. He looks striking look clean. Striking look clean, but if you watch him, he actually reminded me of our dear friend Kamwela, who drives me nuts with this, as he moves forward and just walks forward, walks forward isn't throwing punches when he walks forward and then tries to check hook. And he's always losing on that check hook battle. The check hook battle is not your in educated defense, people. Take a step back. Move away. 
do not just check hook. And that's what he was doing again and again and again. Uh, he would move forward and then he would swing for that check hook and miss it. And then because when you're going forward, if you're not engaging the situation and somebody fires, you're you're behind the mark. It's what, what I said last time. It's like if you and I are both uh, sprinting and you get to call go, you're always going to win before I do. You know what I mean? So if I get to call go, I'm going to win beforehand. So what I like I'm gonna, is um, Jubilee will, will – the first half of his last fight just plods forward – tries to check hook is just getting out everything at, at all when he started finally going first he started throwing his jab and then he started throwing his uh hook his lead a uh, three two and then leading the dance he started really picking apart his opponent i don't even remember which opponent it was at this point his, his last fight um but i couldn't tell you the name so he looks really good there he he has zero takedown defense but does a really good job of flopping over and getting back up. Like he's he's just, Jai Herbert. Yeah, yeah, that's it. He has good hips. So he has good hips. He wiggles well. Um, and, and he actually has decent jujitsu, like decent top game jujitsu. His opponent, Sarah Gay, whatever, he goes first. He throws in combinations. He's got uh, definitely better cardio, I think. And he's got a really good body lock. He's got the body lock takedown that he got again and again and again over his last couple fights was actually really good. And he's beaten some good people as well. I, I think Jubilee is the more technical fighter. And I think this is Choi and Jardin. I think that uh, Sarah Gay is just going to be in his face and throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing and volume and mean and just there. I don't think he's going to like f off and i say you know i'm trying to watch my language last time we posted on youtube and they pulled uh our algorithm and our monetization down because they said it didn't meet guidelines with language and oh, stuff my bad so i was like no nah, it's not a big deal but i was like oh okay like i hear podcasts that are uh, anyway so jubilee won't go or not jubilee uh sergey won't go away um he, getting taken down he gets back up he's got good fight iq I think he's a little bit smaller, and I don't think he's quite as technical, but I love the dog in him. I think Sergey is going to win that fight, and I think the odds are really close on that. Yeah, it's a pick em. It's minus 110 each way. Yeah. Uh, and let's see, the over-under set at 2.5. Yeah, this is a tough one for me. I, this is one I, I think I have to avoid personally, and I wish I could not pick a winner here because it's like, like UK MMA, I understand UK MMA. When a guy trains at a certain gym, like he's at a uh, you know GB top team or something like that, and he's striking like that and doing that kind of stuff, like I'm like, okay, he's probably got good cardio. This th there's patterns set. Indian MMA, I have no clue about. Nobody does. Indonesian MMA, I have no clue about. All I'm seeing is that uh, uh what is it, Jekka? What? Jubilee and Sergey. Uh, Sergey, he man, he can punch. He knocked that. I have never seen a cleaner punch landed than right? in that, you know, road to UFC fight. That was a that was against punch. one of Zombies guys. That giant Korean who had traps the size of boulders connected to his skull. I have never seen a straighter, more clean punch land right to the target than that. Yep. It's like he hit him, and then the, the, his head just came down with his fist, like attached to it. It was crazy. Uh, the only thing I don't like is that he was backed up to the cage. And the thing that I worry about is Jubilee puts, you know, backs him up to the cage and jabs and pulls, jabs and pulls and jabs and pulls and does that for three rounds and kind of feels his flow, feels his rhythm once that's happening. But Jubilee will kick. And in, in, uh, I'm sorry, Sergey will kick, and Jubilee is heavy on that lead leg a little bit. So start hurting that front. Yes, that front I, I think he could start blasting that lead leg a little bit too. I, I think the grappling is going to have to be the biggest thing here. I think uh, Sergey uh, grapples. I think that's going to wear down Jubilee because that style does take a lot of cardio. Yes. It does. To push and pull and mind your P's and Q's at all and times. And Jubilee faded out a good amount in his last fight. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll go Sergey here. Again, not a ton of conviction. I, um, I I think we just need some some data here, and this is going to yeah. be a good information. This whole card is like that. The whole card is like, what is the quality of opponents? What type of gyms? What type of trainers? What type of cardio? What type of... But some of these guys like, got skills that you yes. can see. Yeah, yeah, they they absolutely do. But you, you, there's so many of these guys that you don't see in, in the The WLF bad boys. Yes. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's brutal. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go Sarah. I'll, I'll, I'll follow what you're saying on okay. this one. Um, all right. Next up, we have you, Yusaku Kinoshita versus Adam Fugit. What'd you say? Are you... Don't don't talk to me like that. That's on. Let's go. 
Uh, is this me or you? You go. You go. I think I went on, on that one. Yeah. We always like to snake it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a lot to say on this one. I think Kinoshita is another one of those guys that really is the truth. I mean, th- this kid hits crazy hard. He has incredible distance. And his counter, like someone said, uh, you know, shout out Big Ball Dan. He was like, this is the Asian <coughs> Conor McGregor. And honestly, he's got that same kind of style. Like that little counter, left hand over the top. He looks phenomenal. Um, I think Fugit looked really good in his last fight because the odds were so wide and because of the name of the opponent. But if you really look at He looked better than he was supposed to look. Looked better than he was supposed to look. People were like, man, he belongs in the UFC. And honestly, I don't know that that's true, but Morales' striking is so wide and it's not crisp. It's not like he you know, can shoulder roll and he puts together a really good jab and he's got phenomenal boxing. He's kind of a wild swinger. So anybody throwing stuff up the middle, especially with volume, is going to look good against him. He got a takedown on him, which, you know, because Morales is supposed to be some you know, credentialed wrestler. I-, I think we're looking at recency bias here. He did better than he was supposed to. So now he's, you know, a two-to-one dog against a guy that really should be should be the minus 600 against Fugit. This kid is just, he's got a, he's got great counter punching. He's got good hips. He just checks every single box and Fugit will throw volume. He's going to plot forward. He's going to get countered the entire time. I like an under, I like Kinoshita inside the distance. I, I just, I think this is a, an easy spot here. See, I don't like this fight at all. And I think if there's a parlay buster in this card, this is the one. Really? hundred percent. And I know Mr. Japan is the A side here times 100, but he cannot stop a takedown to save his life. It's pathetic. Watching him getting thrown to the ground, if you watch tape uh, of his last couple fights, even the one he fought, uh, if, if you look up his uh, tape, I think it was two fights ago, he won in like a, under a minute knockout or 68 second knockout, something crazy like that. Before okay, that, yeah. he got picked up and thrown down like he'd never wrestled a day in his life. And he scrambled back up to his feet and, you know, found the counter punch. We saw that. But I'm worried about the wrestling. And then we saw him get taken down in his last fight as well. Um, and, and, again, he, he gets back up. You have an American wrestler who wrestled in high school. He wrestled in junior college. He's very tall. He's very big. We already saw him take down Morales. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Fugit go get a takedown and, like, a crazy weird quick rear naked choke or a guillotine or something really? off the top. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if that – like Fugit, I, I, I think Fugit is really bad. I think he is really, really bad, and I do not think he belongs <laughs> in the UFC. I think Mr. Japan over here is actually decent. I think his wrestling is very suspect, and I think he's actually going to have a much better career in the UFC. But this matchup right here, Fugit is tall. He's awkward. He looked a lot better in that Morales fight and didn't get didn't eat as many punches. He ate a lot of punches, like, though. No, he did, but uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, he wore the punches well at first. Like, at, at first he was moving. He looked the part. He looked the part enough to get a couple of takedowns on a massive Morales, who is actually really, really good. Um, His striking is not really good, though. Who, Morales? Morales right. is good in general. He's, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, he's very good in general. Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. Like, uh, Mr. Japan over here is super fast, super dynamic, can find that knockout fast. Absolutely. But I really think if Fugit wrestles... Look, Mr. Japan is the A side over here, you guys. Like, this is, you know, there's always that one, the parlay buster, the minus 1,000, minus Omar 800 Washington. type of stuff, you know. And, and I think that, uh, I think Fugit could parlay bust because I'm not that big on, because I think uh, his opponent, I don't even know his name, um, just because I don't know anybody's name on this card, is, is, has great, fast, dynamic striking. It's almost like, like the McKinney type of stuff. He was Come on. like no no I mean like before you knew what he was it's like whoa like he just starched people yeah and then people knew what he was and they just knew oh okay just don't don't stand there and trade with him the dude really is that good and kind of mess and that's what I think here if if Fugit's people watched any tape they would say stay long and then just shoot right like don't engage he is really fast if he doesn't do that I I wouldn't be shocked to see a well then a the over under set at one and a half are you going over no I th- I, I think. Gosh, if it was two and a half, I would easily say under two and a half. Um, I would say the fight doesn't go the distance. Uh, one and a half is a tricky one. It's always on tricky. this one. Yeah, yeah. You, that's a tricky one. I would say fight does not go the distance. I, I just think that uh, wrestling is just so, uh, so uh, 
neutralized these days. You could take someone down for four minutes and 55 seconds. If they get up for five seconds and beat your ass, you just lost the round, which yeah. is crazy to me. So I think if his only path to, I don't think he's going to, do you think he's going to beat him on the feet? Fugit? No, 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 not, not, not even, even close. close. Not even close. There's not. And so yeah. even if he gets a takedown, if yeah. he doesn't immediately submit him, then I think it's going to be Kinoshita all day. Yeah. So I, I like Kinoshita inside the distance, but I could see Fugit being tough enough to last a yeah. round and a half. I just, if I didn't see Mr. Japan's wrestling be so bad, like comically bad, I was like, oh, like just zero defense. He's 22. We don't learn how to wrestle until 25. Yeah, exactly. It, it, I, that's what worries me. And I'm just like, gosh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. If, if it was like closer odds or something great, but I think he's what, minus 350 or something like that? Yeah. Is that what it was? Like, yeah. I, I don't see the value in it. And I think he's the guy that's going to bust some parlays. Oh, your value, hard. boys. Come on. So. Come on, coach. You know that I just pick winners. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next up, we have, let's take a look. Next up, we have the uh, Korean, what is it? Superboy? Superboy Choi. Superboy Choi versus Kyle Nelson. Man, uh, you got Choi, who's coming off a 27-year layoff from mandatory military service over in Korea. Is that what it was? Yep. Oh, so, okay. yep, yep. So he had he had military service over in Korea, um, which I think is probably good for him. Because three losses in a row. Yep, three losses in a row. One decision, two knockouts. But you got to give him credit, e even in the. Um, was it so the uh, Jordan fight? I thought he was winning that fight until he got hit. Yep. Like almost like easily winning that fight. And in the Jeremy Stevens fight, he was winning that fight. And then I think he actually got hurt and he doesn't really look hurt, but he was really beating Jeremy Stevens up in, I think it was the second round that he lost. Whatever round it was that he lost, he was really beating him up. And then he got clipped with like a little hook and it, and it was a good shot, but he didn't look hurt. But then he stopped going forward and stopped all of it. And then Jeremy came on and, yeah, kind of got him, um, but he was trading blow for blow with Stevens. And it's a tough it, task for anybody. It is, but he made it. He wore it well. He made it look good. He did well doing it. Like I was really shocked at how good he did there. And then, but his, he's good. He's good everywhere. He's really, really, really good everywhere. The knock on him before he took his layoff was his chin. Which is who's the other Choi? Uh, Suho Choi. What is? Oh come on, come on, come uh, on. We don't need to talk Choi? about him now. Uh, we don't need to talk about him. Man, but but it's kind of the same. So good everywhere. I think this one's way better than that one. So do I. I think this one, but he's not as big, and his wrestling's not quite as like I, that other Choi's wrestling. I just think is awesome. Like his take defense, maybe because of his height or something. Yeah. But anyway, um, this Choi is he? he he's good. His chin was an issue. I think the time off is going to really help him. I think training with Zombie and them, they've got a lot of really good guys. I think it's a good... I think we're going to see a really good showing from him outside of some uh, nerves and some ring rust. Yeah. Now, on the other side, we've got Kyle... Uh, was it Nelson? Yep. Um, Kyle Nelson. And I, I just ask, I know who is fighting. I watch the tape. I just... The, the name. I want to make sure I get his last name right. Um, a big, strong durable guy who's okay like that that's how i serviceable would, he's yes. fine yeah. he, he's very okay and i think this first of all this fight was supposed to be in korea i was supposed to be over there in korea because zombie was going to be the main event <laughs> and then it, that didn't end up working out the just for whatever reasons that i'm not getting into but uh so they moved it to america t at the apex and so I, I i think this is a spot for Choi to shine they gave Choi the best spot that they could give Choi to win in his home country, which was originally supposed to be. Uh, I, I mean, I, I got to say Choi here times a thousand every which way. Yeah, I, I'm not going to even elaborate too much more on that. Uh, honestly, the only thing that's scaring me is that the odds are minus 182. Yeah, why aren't they way more? Way well, more. I, I guess because he was chinned. And then he's been off for a few years. It's got to be that. I, I mean, guess you're like, factoring that. And then Kyle Nelson had a closer fight with Jai Herbert than yeah. he was supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think and Nelson so much had better. a closer fight with Quarantillo, but Quarantillo is not a technician. He's a wear you out guy. And I think they're probably playing that as a factor as <laughs> Billy well. Billy Q is like 
almost so awful everywhere, but yet is so freaking good at the same time. Right? He just won't die. He's the ultimate Homer Simpson. Oh, watching that last fight with yeah. Alex Hernandez getting his ass beat in the first round, just throwing crazy punches with the zero technique, and then you're just like, yeah, this is a Billy Q fight. Gotta love it. <laughs> so. um, yeah, there's there's not too much more to say. Honestly, the odds are the only thing that scares me, but like, honestly, the way that I look at this, I know... Uh, I'm going to play a big single on this. See, I'm changing, Big Steve. You, you, you're looking at this. I'm changing. I'm going to play a big single on this. Uh, also, I think I like um, Choi, uh, Rinya, and probably Park as a nice little parlay. I think that'll pay, pay, pay pretty well, and I think those are some really solid spots here. Okay. Let's see. What's next? Are we main even? No, we've got... The Russians on the card, right? Yeah, We've got next the European up, block. Yeah, we got Marcin Tybura and Blago, uh, Blagoy Ivanov. This is a weird one just in terms of like matchmaking. Like, these are two older guys who both have decent records. Neither of them is like, like, they're not on their way out. Like, it's not like they'll I mean, they're lose. both old. Yeah, but I mean, like, in terms of like being cut style, like, it's not like loser is cut. Type maybe Blagoy, but maybe not. Didn't he um, win the last fight that he's? He, he won. did win his last fight, but he's lost I think two before that. So whatever. Uh, but they're not building. They're, who's the builder here? Who's the A side here? There's no real like, like this is to keep them busy. Yeah, it's to keep them busy. Something happened where they couldn't find somebody else to to build off of them or to cut. Maybe it's if uh, Derek Lewis goes to the hospital again, they can ask one of them to main event. Actually, ah, that's actually not a bad idea. It's actually like <laughs> because somebody falls yeah, out. Yeah, last time is we were walking out to the cage. They told us, oh, the main You're event's right, canceled. the main event. Who, what fight was that with? That was Spivak and Derek Lewis. No, no, but who are we cornering? Uh, Vanessa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah, we heard that as it happened. Um, g- give me your thoughts on this. Uh, again, uh, this is like, I think you could watch five hours of tape on this one and still come out just as confused as you were before you went in because it's like, okay, how did the styles line up? How does the size line up? What dumb shit is Ty Burra going to do? Uh, Ty Burra won his last fight by doing the Homer Simpson, letting, you know, Romanov, uh, wear Romanov. Himself. Yeah. Romanov, Romanov. And yeah, like he that. always does. Like we always knew what happened. Right. Uh, I actually think I like Blagoy here. I think his boxing is a lot more crisp. I think he manages distance a lot better. And weirdly, I think his fight IQ is a little bit better. He'll do a little bit more cage pushing than Ty Burrow will, or Ty Burrow will try to go for takedowns. And I think Blagoy is good enough to defend the takedowns, counterpunch him, make it just a dirty kind of grind him out fight. So at the big plus money, I, give me Blagoy in a fight that I feel is like a, a coin flip. Honestly, I think I give Blagoy, how do you ever say his name? I think I give him the edge in the boxing and the cage pushing. I am with you on a coin flip, but not necessarily for the same, all the same stuff. So, uh, Blagoy is, he doesn't really offensively wrestle unless he's losing. So there's that. Um, if you watch him as last, when he fought Tai Tuivasa, that was three and a half years ago. Like he is so much slower now than he was back then. He did also win his last fight with a broken knee. Oh, did he? Okay. Like, was, there was, like, chatter, like, his knee was shot was out of the cannon, up, really. and he still won. My issue with Blagoy is low volume. But that's my issue with Chaipura as well. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll actually get to that. And I was wondering, like, who low volumes more effectively? And then I was like, okay, well, Blagoy has the cage pushing side of it, like you yeah, said, which yeah. I agree. But then I was watching his last couple of fights, and he's being pushed on the cage. And then he wasn't even, like, pushing people to the cage. He's just kind of plodding forward. And he's not, I don't think he has good boxing at all. He's a southpaw. He kind of reaches with his lead hand as he punches with his rear hand. But so does Ty Burry. He punches like he's like, yes. like a girl hitting. Yeah, but but Blagoy kind of, what Blagoy does well is he throws in exchanges as other people throw. So he throws as they throw, and I, I like that. He does have good power. Everything is a looper. There is no, if you ask me to tell you, say Blagoy throw through three punches. To, for you to tell me what were those punches? Was it cross across? Was it an uppercut? <laughs> was it a jab? I'd be like hybrids. They were punches. Because like, yeah. there's no like there's no discernible like feature of any of them. They just are there. So there's that. His cardio he fades a little bit. Uh, and Tybura's cardio is actually good for being as old as he is in the style that he does. Watching Tybura, 
which we'll get to in a minute against Spivak. He took Spivak down every round again and again and again. And Spivak couldn't do anything to him. He defended his takedowns and then took him down, which was really shocking. Then you watch him against um, Walt Harris, who's not great at all. Yeah. But Walt was swinging at him for probably a minute straight with everything he had. He's game. And Tybura is just hands up, head movement, like calm in the pocket, like – I, I really was like you. You might be switching me right now. He was shockingly good at defending stuff. His fight IQ was good, even against Romanov. He was getting launched and thrown and launched and thrown, but it wasn't like he was trying to do a lot in those. He kind of knew, oh, let this occur, let him float out, and then then he won. You know, of course he won. That was a close one as well. But again, it's the volume. He just doesn't throw a lot of volume. And so I really think that the skill set and fight IQ and cardio all go to Tybura. But I think Blagoy will exchange in the pocket. And if they really want a push fest, I think Blagoy can win the push fest. You know, just uh, he just seems so small. And Tybura, I've been around Tybura, yes. is massive. Tybura is big. Um, so, and his wrestling is decent. He does all the right stuff. I, Again, my my only, I mean, I, I all of the signs point to for me Tybura all the way, but again, the low volume of Tybura and the it's not like he has crazy punching power that he's going to knock Blagoy out. All of Blagoy's decisions, so Blagoy is three and three in the UFC. All of his fights have gone to a decision. There has not been a single fight that is not. So this, you guys, the over fights go to decision over two and a half is easily the play I, I, here. I don't see either one of them getting over on the other one. Yes. And I think it's a 50-50 coin flip. I lean Tybura just off of like all of the stuff that I said leads me to believe that he will win this. But that said, Blagoy could easily just throw a couple loopers, push against the fence, get a takedown, and, and easily steal this. I lean Tybura for the win, but I, I, I really like over two and a half or fight goes the distance. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty close line. Go the distance is minus 180. Tybura on points is plus 130. And... uh Black Goy on points is plus 225. Goes the distance at minus 180 is like free money to me, I think. I can't fathom. I mean... It is heavyweights. It is, but look at who even Tybura, who he's beating. He beat Greg Hardy, and he beat Walt Harris inside the distance, but those guys are just a, a bomb, a one-round bomber bust. And then everybody else, he's winning and losing by decisions as well. These are two better, older heavyweights who are not going to go for the kill. This fight's going to a decision, people. All right. You heard it here first. Put everything you own on, on everything. Goes to decision. Yep. All right. We are in the uh, the last few fights here. So uh, next up, we have Da Un Jung versus Devin Clark. So um, we got to go. We need a poll, people. You know that my, my love for Ian Kutalaba and his – retardation hey hold on uh just really quick uh, this is a perfect card for never bet a white we got some whites on this card but they're like eastern block whites yeah uh, those are you know whatever Th that's not where the rule applies but you got fugit uh and you got uh kyle nelson those are some traditional whites devin clark but might as well be but a is white. that like never bet a white against an asian or against a black person because it's anything Okay. All right. Ne All never right. bet a white. Never fails. Yeah, that's true. All right. All right. So, my like uh, Devin Clark is up there with Ian Cutalaba with me, and maybe Terrence McKinney in stupid fight IQ. Okay. Like just holy shit. Um, and Devin Clark reminds me of McKinney a lot. Uh, Clark was a JUCO national champ. He can wrestle his ass off. He. In real wrestling, not necessarily cage wrestling, but like wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Uh, he's athletic as hell. He's fast. He's dynamic. Checks all the boxes. Holy shit, does he do bad, dumb stuff. He's just not a good fighter. Um, I mean, he, he's won fights, and he's, he's done well, and he's, he is where he is. All right. Um, shit. It's like, dude could go out there swinging and knock people out and take them down and look amazing. Uh, look what he did with William Knight. I mean, you know, he just— But also, it's William Knight. It is, but William Knight's a durable human who's generally, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not, I've, I know what you mean. I've picked mean. William Knight a few times and, I, and I've picked against him, but William Knight is a durable human. You know what you're getting yeah. with him. Da Un Jung, Da, oh fuck, the big Korean. That dude is good. 
good, fast, heavy hands, yep. moves forward, uh, great defensive wrestling, great body lock takedowns, as we saw against William Knight numerous times. Knight tried to push Jung to the fence. Jung body locked him, took him down, almost like bounced off because they were too close, rebody locked him and took him down. Good fight IQ, does all the right stuff. He's tall. Um, I don't think we've really seen any cardio issues with him. I, I think he got clipped by Jacoby. And Jacoby's freaking good, man. Um, I, I, I really like Jung. Even if, look, Clark is athletic. Clark can do a lot. He's too reckless. And Jung checks all of the boxes. Like, all of the boxes are checked on Jung. Clark needs a... a Ian Kuchalaba, Terrence McKinney kind of performance to win, whereas Jung can win a thousand different ways. Yeah, I mean, the guy who can put 15 minutes better together. The fact that this one was supposed to be in Korea, I mean, tells you pretty much all you need to know, right? They're putting him in the co-main event spot. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think too much needs to be said here. I love me some Daun Jung in this spot. His striking is super clean, right? That was a very good fight with Jacoby until it wasn't. Until it wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I like him. I think that Devin Clark finds too many ways to lose the fight. He's got all this. I think he's got a lot of skills and a lot of uh, measurables. Like he's fast, he's athletic, yep. he's strong as hell, and just consistently finds ways to well, lose fights. It's almost fights. like going to the NFL on the combine. You you check the boxes. All right, how many times can you put up 225? What's your 40? What's your vertical? What's all of this stuff? It's like, great. Now you get to like fight IQ and like NFL IQ and, and trying to beat the corner on the inside versus the outside. And yeah. now it's, <laughs> you know, now it's like, all right, well, all, all of the measurables in the world don't matter. Yeah. I, I like me some Daun Jung here. So add that to the little Korean parlay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, Korea is going to have a strong night. And remember, you guys, this was, we, we talked about it in Brazil. Brazil had a good night down there. Um, most of the Brazilians won. Most of the Koreans here are going to win. This was a Korea card. Yep. Everyone else is being brought in to lose. Um, yeah, I think it's main event time, right? It is main event time. So for the but main... hold on, before we get to the main event, you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do it. There's no reason not to. Do, can you think of a reason, Brandon? I can think of a few. Okay, but I, but I won't say them. Yeah, I mean, the one that I can think of is then you have to listen to us again and again. And, <laughs> but separate from that, please like the video and share. Like, I mean, just share the video. Check us out on Patreon, Discord. The links are in the show notes. All right, all right, all right. All right, so for the main event, we have Mr. Big Korean himself, Derek Lewis versus mm -hmm. Sergey Spivak. Uh, kick us off with this. I think I kicked the last one. Yeah, we, we actually, we did a... We a, did this before. We did this before. We did a long one before. I wish I had gone back and listened to that can we just copy and paste it yeah this one let's do Sorry, that if you guys see us in different outfits and without the <laughs> set uh we didn't turn the light on again ah oh, damn it we're gonna get this eventually guys eventually uh -huh. um yeah i don't think a lot needs to be said about this one either you know all the the value people guys it's so, so annoying to me leave me alone like just leave me alone but uh sergey spivak is minus 230 the over under is set at a round and a half so if you're playing Spivak or you're playing Derek Lewis, either way, you're just going to do them inside the distance. So Spivak inside the distance, minus 180. Um, I mean, Derek Lewis is not going five rounds. Win or lose, he's He's not gone going. decision quite a bit in the boring fights. The thing with Derek Lewis is, let's look at the Nganu fight. They just stared at each other. That was pre, I'm going to wrestle Nganu. Spivak is, I'm going to wrestle Spivak. He's got a good yeah. jab. He's got good range awareness. His wrestling is amazing for a heavyweight. I mean, His offensive wrestling, like I said. It's sick. Ty, I was shocked. to I wanted to watch Tybura's wrestling because Blagoy is a really good wrestler. And so I was like, how did he do defending Spivak shots? And then he was out wrestling Spivak left and right. Yeah, yeah. Spivak was on his back a a lot of that fight and had no idea what to do there. Yeah, but I think Spivak's been on the good Mexican supplements. He's leveled up a ton. Uh, he just knows what he wants to do. And I think that Derek Luce is at the point where he's made his money. He's made his mark. He knows he's not going for a title again. So when things get tough, I'm good. I I've made my money. I'm out of here. Or he's going to have the nuclear option and just nuke, uh, nuke Spivak. But to me, I mean, I think the better fighter far and away, almost every fight Derek Luce has had, he's not been the better fighter. Almost every single one he's won, he has not been the better fighter, but he's got that big option. But yeah. people weigh too much on that, I think, in my opinion. I think Spivak takes him down, mauls him, submits him, whatever it is. But I, I like Spivak here. Yeah, I, man, I really was 
a hundred percent on Spivak before I started watching that tape again. Uh, and then I started thinking. And you think Derek Lewis is going to go take him down? D1 Derek? No. I, well, I, I think a lot of things. One, Lewis will actually, his takedowns aren't bad. He's actually gotten some takedowns in him. When he goes. Yeah, yeah, like he'll actually do it. And he's big. Um, and I think if Spivak isn't ready for it, he could be caught off guard and get taken down. But, you know, I mean, look at the Curtis uh, Blades fight, man. Derek Lewis just waited and waited and waited and then, you know, f- found that uppercut on his way in. What worries me is is that is it's a Derek Lewis fight, and it's not even that big nuclear option. It's that people stay so far away on Lewis because when he gets close, they know that's an option. So they don't really know how to get close. And then he actually throws all those kicks to keep people at bay. So then they rush in. And then when they rush in, that's when the nuclear option occurs. Um, and so, of course, there is that nuclear option, but I actually worry about just Spivak as a whole, you pull up his record really quickly and take a look yeah. at who he's beaten. And, and I remember going like, man, like, all right, it was Spivak is the one, but then the uh, his his wins. <laughs> I know what you're saying here. So he beat Augusto Sakai. Not a not a bad win. Not a bad win, but not a great wrestler. Greg Hardy lost to Aspinall. He beat Alexi Olenek, Jared Vandere, Carlos Felipe. Not not a bad win. Felipe is a decent win, and Sakai is a decent win. Lost to Tybura, beat Tuivasa, which again not a bad win. Yeah. Uh, lost to Walt Harris, so not great. He beat the legendary Tony Lopez before the UFC. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Walt Harris need him. Um, right? Am I crazy? There was that a knee? Uh, Yep, knees and punches. Yep. And then now look at Derek Lewis's last like five fights. All right, all right, all right. I see where you're going with this. But at the end of the day, you got a 37 year old. Uh, Sergey Pavlovich tied to Ivasa, <clears throat> beat Chris Dacus, lost to Cyril Gon, beat Curtis Blades, Alexi Linick, Iller, Latifi, uh, Blagoy, Ivanov, and then lost to yeah. Cormier and Dos Santos. Like he is losing a really, really, really good guys, um, beating some decent guys in there as well. And so that, that, look, Spivak should win, but I'm not, like, sold, sold. Because I, I, I don't think Lewis is as, I just don't think Lewis is as bad as people think he is. I think he's he's got to get that big knockout or bust. And what I think, I, I think you're right with the, when push comes to shove and danger happens, he's going to break 100%. Spivak's not that scary of a guy in terms of, like, he is now power and like he has been lately his hands have looked good lately his, his speed looks really good against Sakai he's the only heavyweight on earth that jabs yes it's true 100% um his his jab looks really good his boxing looked really good I just worry that like if if Derek Lewis doesn't get hurt Derek Lewis is fine when Derek Lewis really gets hurt is when he just crumbles like that's like he, he's not a guy he's too old to fight through the the fire yeah and I don't know that Spivak is going to get him down easily and then hold him down and all of that stuff. Again, I'm saying Spivak should win, you guys. Like, I really think so. But it wouldn't, this is not going to be the, the upset of the year if Lewis wins. And I just don't, like... The year is young. The year is young. I, I want to see... Look, I, I've been on Spivak. I, I've been on Spivak a lot. I just, I want to see him really beat Lewis in a very good manner. Before I'm like, all right, let's put this guy against the top five against the in the division right there. So I want he's got to prove himself to me. Beating Greg Hardy, you know, yeah, doesn't yeah, do yeah. anything. Losing to Tybura and losing to Walt Harris does. Like that is that's not awesome. Look, he's gotten better. We we know Vandere, we know Olenek. These guys are not impressive. Like and look, honestly, that event the uh, Olenek fight was pretty close. That Olenek fight was really close. So what? I mean, again, he got out wrestled by Tybura a lot. Like, I'm not sold on... I like Spivak. I am not sold on him yet. Um, man, I, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to, like... Well, the way you could do it, I mean, like Cody Sta- Saftik, 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 Saftik style, you could uh, put him as the last piece of your parlay, and then that'll lead for a nice hedge-out spot once you get there. Uh, I like Spivak just straight up. I just think he's uh, he's a young man. It's passing of the torch, just like the last 10 fights of Derek Lewis yeah. should have been. Um, big Moldovan bear. I mean, somebody's got to hold it down for Moldova. Kutalaba's not keeping up his end of the bargain, so it's Supervici and it's uh, Alexi. Or I'm sorry, uh, Spivak. That's it. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm torn with this one. I, I I'm gonna be contrarian. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say Lewis. I'm gonna say Lewis. Just say Lewis. There we go. We I'm can't lose Lewis. now. 
Can't lose. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, man, that's it. That's everything. Go check out the Patreon. Check out all the good stuff. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, oh, check out the the Patreon and Discord for some Bellator stuff this week. So we'll we'll throw a we have Mr. Henry spots. Corrales, yeah, we have Corrales on on the card. There's a lot of good stuff so on that card. There's good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff coming up. So we'll see you guys next time.